Hey guys, today we're gonna talk about what documents you need to have in your estate plan. What documents you need to have as part of your estate plan. Whether you come to us or to another attorney, these are the documents that you should have. These are the bare minimum that you should have in your estate plan. And the reason this has come up is because we have recently, unfortunately, had to either probate or go into guardianship proceedings with who had not done, shall we say, their estate plan correctly or had not done all the documents that needed to be in their estate plan. So unfortunately, because they try to cut corners in the early stages and save money, I don't know if they're necessarily trying to cut corners, but they were trying to save money. And because of that, and going to maybe an internet site or someplace like that to get a power of attorney or to download will, that may not even apply to Oklahoma or their particular state that they're in now are having to pay an extraordinary amount of money to fix items that were done wrong the first place because they had just basically filled out forms. So when you come to our office, you're going to get a binder like this. And it's pretty thick of all the documents that we include in this particular document. So it includes... Um, I'll go through it in a second, but if what you have <laughs> compared to this, if you've downloaded, uh, let's say, a trust over the internet, we saw one the other day, literally we saw a revocable living trust that somebody brought in that was a page and a half. This is not going to cut it. So let's go through what we have, and that way you can compare and see if you need to talk to your estate planning attorney. So first of all, like I said, we give you this binder, and as soon as you open this binder, the first page is the title of your trust and has all the information that you need so when you go to your financial institutions or wherever it is to t change title to uh, assets from your name to the name of the trust, this first page by itself will help you solve probably 80% of those questions. The next thing we have is it's a completely tab section. So we have probably 13 or 14 different tabs depending on the situation in the binder. So each tab is a different section of your estate plan, of your revocable living trust centered estate plan. So the very first one is the section that describes what each individual tab is. The next section that we have is we literally give you a summary of your trust. And you really do need to read all of that and you need to have your estate planning attorney go over each page with you. I know it can take a long time, but have them go over and describe to you what is in each of those pages and why it's important as part of your estate plan. But sometimes you're just looking for a certain provision and the summary that we do is kind of like an executive summary. The summary that we do for you is a good place to just kind of read over real quickly. And then if you need more in-depth information, you can actually go to that same section in the trust document itself. So the next section is the trust document. <laughs> That's where we have all of your information, where we have created a revocable living trust centered around you with your needs and your wants to protect you during your lifetime and your family after you pass away. So like I said, this document is, is pretty thick. It's uh, depending on what information we need to put in there. It could be 40, 50, 60, 80 pages long. Compare that to something you might get from someplace else, like I told you about, that it was only a page and a half. You can see the difference and how well these will function <laughs> compared to each other. We tried to come up with as many what ifs to protect you as possible. The next section, what's called a pour over will. And I've talked about a pour over will in this video up here. And Basically, a pour-over will is kind of a catch-all for any items that are not in the trust that you have not properly funded into your trust. The pour-over will is kind of the backstop to make sure that if you did forget to put something in there, we, we still have to probate it, unfortunately, that particular asset that was left out, but we probate it and we put it back into the trust for distribution the way you want it distributed. So check out that video course, after you watch this video. The next section in your binder is the confirmation of names and fiduciaries. So this is really important. This is literally the page that says who your successor trustees are, who your successor, your next in line is, who your power of attorney is, who is next in line, who your healthcare power of attorney is. So you can read all of this information in the actual documents themselves, but without having to go to the actual documents and try to find the page that it's on, you can simply go to this page, to this tab section, for the confirmation of names and fiduciaries for a listing of everybody that is a part of your estate-centered estate plan. The next section that we like to put in is instructions for funding your trust. 
you've heard me talk over and over again about funding your trust and how important it is. In fact, we just did a little mini series on funding your revocable living trust. You can check out that playlist right up here <laughs> that should be popping up and the videos that are inside of it. And we talk about putting real estate into your trust, your bank accounts into your trust, what we think about putting cars into trust. So check out those videos again after you finish watching this video. But we go in depth with instructions that tell you exactly how to title your assets in the name of the trust. And of course, if there's a situation where you're just not clear, you can always call us and we'll help you along the way. The next section is your power of attorney. Again, we had it recently whose power of attorney was literally one page. It wasn't even in the entire page. It was like three paragraphs a power of attorney, guys. You take this to a financial institution or someplace else and it does not contain powers specific to banking institutions or to your financial institution, they're not gonna accept that document. So you need to make sure you have a power of attorney that covers all of those what ifs, real estate, banking, everything, <laughs> selling your stocks and bonds, all of those things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, dealing with your utility companies, all of those need to be in your power of attorney. And if they're not, if you're getting something that's only three paragraphs long, you're doing a disservice to yourself and to your family in case they have to do an adult guardianship because your power of attorney is not done correctly. The next habit in our binder is certificate of trust or sometimes call it affidavit of trust. And this is simply a certifi certificate affidavit that is stating that you actually have a revocable living trust. So banking institutions and financial institutions and other parties, they don't need to look at your trust, right? You're getting a trust because it's your business, not theirs. And so the certificate of trust or affidavit of trust stands in the place of the trust and gives them the notice that you have a trust and you have the authority to do what you are doing. So that's why you need to have affidavit or a certificate of trust in your binder in case you need it. The next section we have in our binder is your healthcare documents. And guys, I cannot stress how important this is and how important it is to keep these documents in particular up to date as much as possible. Now, you've heard me say over and over again that if there's any changes in your financial or personal life, you need to review your estate plan. But in particular, you need to make sure that your healthcare documents are up to date all the time because if something were to happen to you and you were become incapacitated even if it's just for a short little time you need to be able to make sure that there is somebody to take over for your finances and for your medical decisions so in our tab for the healthcare documents we have a healthcare power of attorney so i talked about earlier how we had a property power of attorney but we also have a healthcare power of attorney and it's extremely important that you have both of these documents one to cover your finances and one to cover you for your health, for your body. Along with the healthcare power of attorney, we also have your living will, or you sometimes have heard it called advanced directive. And in addition to that, we have a HIPAA authorization, a separate HIPAA authorization document that tells your medical professionals who can have access to your medical documents. This is extremely, extremely important. And if you've done your revocable living trust with us, you'll also have this card. We use a company called DocuBanks, and we quite literally upload your healthcare documents to this company. So if you were to become incapacitated and end up in a hospital, maybe you're separated from your spouse and emergency personnel don't know who to contact. They can use that card to figure out who exactly is your emergency contact and get access to your healthcare power of attorney, your advanced directive, and your HIPAA authorizations so that the medical per personnel and the emergency personnel will know exactly who to talk to and who has authority to make decisions on your behalf. Vitally important. So make sure you have some type of plan that you not only have these documents in place, but you have some type of plan that will allow people to access that information when it's needed. That is so important. The next tab section that we have is your asset section. Quite literally, what assets do you have in your trust? So if you come to us and we put your house, let's say for example, into the name of their trust, we will put the deeds that we have used to transfer and then we've actually filed with the county clerk, they will be in that section. In that section, you'll also see affidavits where, or transfer papers where you're transferring your personal belongings like your clothes, furniture, et cetera, into the name of the trust so that when the time comes, your successor trustee will be able to distribute those items according to the terms of your trust. 
And guys, there's also in sections in here for memorial instructions, in other words, your funeral. And I can't tell you how important it is and what a gift it is for you to have done that information and have it ready to pre-plan your funeral and have that information ready in case it's ever needed. It is truly a blessing to your loved ones. In that time when they're really, really sad and they really don't know where to go or what to do or what to think, if all of that is already planned out for them, it takes a huge burden off of their shoulders and allows them just to grieve. So I would really advise that if you've done your plan with us, that you make certain that you have that section filled out. Well guys, that's all for today. If you've got value, then please hit the like button below. And if this is your first time here, please also hit the subscribe button so you'll get updates every time we post a new video. And don't forget that on Saturdays, every Saturday at 8.30 in the morning, we have a live stream. So what that means is we're going to be putting on a seminar of some sort. Last week it was on Pet Trust. This week it's gonna be something different. And every Saturday at 8.30, we'll have a live stream. The, the seminar itself will probably last about 30 minutes, but then after that, we open it up to questions for any topic regarding estate planning. Now we can't give you legal advice, but we can point you in the right direction. So. Don't forget to watch that on Saturdays at 8.30. It's our new live stream. If you can think of a name for us to name it, please let us know. Coffee with Steve, estate planning and coffee, I don't know. Let us know. As always, have a great day, have a great week, and as always, have an awesome week. We'll see you next time, and thanks for watching.